Welcome back and uh, glad you're still with us here on The Breakfast. Our final conversation this morning is going to be talking once again about security, but this time about the Chibok girls. A few days ago, there was a report that one of them and maybe a few others had escaped and reconnected with their families. Uh, the um, Defense Ministry yesterday put out a statement saying that nothing of that sort happened and uh, the military did not in any way rescue any new Chibok girls. Um, but this is a conversation that uh, we've had for the last six years, seven years now since their kidnap um, uh, in 2014. We've invited this morning uh, security expert, Mr. Chidi Omeje, to uh, speak with us and share his thoughts on the latest developments. Good morning, Mr. Omeje. Good morning. Good morning, and thanks, thanks for having me. Uh, thanks for joining us. I'm, I'm going to start by saying, you know, uh, sadly, we are still having conversations about these young schoolgirls who were taken more than six years ago um, and still have not been found. Um, Nigerian parents, and I believe their parents, you know, are still very hopeful that at some point, you know, these people would be rescued and they will be brought, brought back home. But I want you to quickly share your thoughts on, um, first of all, let's go to a foundation, why exactly it has taken... Uh, it has been this difficult to locate these schoolgirls in the last six years. Okay. Um, to my understanding, you know, uh, the the abductors talking about the Boko Haram elements. I think they see this, those Chibo girls as their possession. You know, I like a, a bargaining chip. Uh, so it is quite difficult for them to let go because they know that. Uh, you know, Nigerians and of course the entire global family will, will give anything to have those um, hapless girls back to their families. So they are, they, they're, they're holding them back uh, it means that they they value their you know their possession and and that explains exactly why it's been so difficult to get them back. Um, that, having said that, we also have to understand that terrorists uh, thrive uh, on matters like this. They like to make sure you know you have the worst experience of life they want to make sure that they give you the worst form of uh, treatment to be able to change your views to be able to change to shift grounds so um it's it's horrible it's it's, 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 it's so bad that uh, those girls have to endure that long incarceration six years uh, going to seven years they've been there uh, I, I but we're not giving hope we're not giving up hope we I believe that uh, someday uh, and I'm, 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 I'm even going to have the optimism that probably this new set of service chiefs might spring up some su uh, surprises and then, uh, you know, give us those guests back. All right. That's what but, I think but, but that would also be, you know, at a point where we are sure that they are still being held by the Boko Haram sect. Um, it's been six long years of the, we've had opportunities to change strategy. We've had opportunities to try, you know, multiple times to maybe rescue them. We've had opportunities to also verify their location. In six years, that should be enough time for us to confirm 100% that they are still being held by these persons. And I, I'm not sure, you know, what your analysis would be also on a terrorist group being able to keep people um, captive for six years. Um, I, I don't know how likely that is, but... Can we confirm in any way, have we been able to confirm in any way that we are 100% sure that these people are still in captivity and they're still being held by the Boko Haram sect? Of course, if, if, of course I mean, if they're not in captivity, where are they? The, the, what, I, what, what we should understand is that, you know, we're talking about uh, hundreds of girls. Uh, so the natural thing now that they may have shared them, split them into bits, probably married them off. So it becomes very difficult to actually release them in bulk. So, um, you know, that is why you are seeing some kind of piecemeal release, or you're seeing one or, one or two escaping and all that. So I'm not sure they are still in one place, uh, hundreds of people in one place for, for, for six years. It's not possible. I'm talking about young women and uh, on that, you know, in the hearts of... Uh, uh, very horrible people. So you, you should expect that uh, a lot may have gone, you know, wrong somewhere. Or probably they might married them off or shared them. I can't. I cannot believe, you know, uh, that these girls are in one space. Uh, so uh, the, 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 the best thing I, I want to believe is that they may have been married off. They may have been separated. 
they are not together. And of course, they are still uh, incarcerated because if they're not incarcerated, their families will have them back. And don't forget that just last week, there was some contention about one or two being released and all that, uh, which of course, you know, that the service chief, uh, the CDS said they were not uh, in, the, uh, in the hands of the military. Meaning that it's possible that those girls may have, you know, found their way, one or two or three could easily escape and then quietly go home. If, if these are possibilities. So, uh, all I'm trying to say is that, yes, they are still in captivity. Otherwise, the world will know when they are re released. Look at the, our prior, the most popular one among them, the Dapchi girl, not, not Chipok girl, Leah Sharibu, for instance. You know, she's still there. And uh, I know, you know, that any, at any moment she's, she's out, the world will know. So the same thing applies to the Chipok girls. If they are released, if, or if in, in any way or form that they are, they are found freedom, the world will still know. That's what I think. Yeah. All right. Um, we, we all heard the news of how a U.S. citizen, he was a 27-year-old, uh, his name was, uh, uh, let's get that out now, Philip Walton, the U.S. citizen based in Niger, he was kidnapped allegedly by Boko Haram or terrorists, and, you know, he was taken hostage in Nigeria. This happened on Tuesday, and by, by Saturday or so, for our four days later, we saw the U.S. seal swooped in carried, rescued their men, I think even, uh, you know, decimated some of those terrorists or bandits that had kidnapped their citizen. This was just in a space of four days. But it's been about six years now, and the Nigerian government and security agencies have failed to rescue the over 100 girls who are still missing in, or are still in Boko Haram captivity. I mean, what does this really say of our, of our status, basically, as a giant of Africa? Uh, my first uh, reaction to that is that uh, the circumstances are not the same, right? You are talking about a single person kidnapped, but we're talking about hundreds of girls kidnapped by... Uh, and, and by the way, we have to also distinguish the, the, the captors. This time around, the, the, the one that the Americans were talking about were not kidnapped by terrorists, they were kidnapped by kidnappers, all right? But we're talking about the fact that the chief of girls were kidnapped by a terrorist, a ter terrorist group that with international network that uh, have the capability to, you know, to change positions at, at will. They have the logistics to do that. But those ones that Ameri the, the single person that Americans came to rescue, uh, we understand was the, the guy was kidnapped by, you know, by uh, a kidnapped group that's quite different from the terrorist group. We have to make this distinction because, mm -hmm. you know, uh, crime has its own dynamics. It's not just the fact that one would kidnap. They're not the same circumstance. So all I'm trying to say is, look, don't, we should not be too hard on ourselves, actually, as a matter of fact. Are you telling me that there has never been a time that our security agencies were able to rescue kidnapped people? It had happened in the past. So the fact that Americans kid, uh, released one, just a single one of their uh, citizens does not um, mean that our, our our security forces are so lax or that they're so unprofessional or that they're, they're so ineffective. Uh, you know, that's the kind of thing that Nigeria should not be thinking about. The fact that those guys made successful release of their citizen does not invalidate our own professionalism. We have done things bigger than that before. So what we should be talking about is how do we support this new set of service chiefs with their new vigor, with their new, you know, enthusiasm to do more, to, 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 uh, to, to, go into the field there and probably even rescue the Chippewa girls wherever they, are, they, have, they have been separated to be in. So I don't want to look at the Americans. They've done what they've, they've, they've tried, but there are situations we have also tried in the past. So right. we should be able to, if you want to compare, let's not lose sight of the fact. So I don't like, let's not be too hard on ourselves. We are trying our best uh, under the circumstance. It's All not right. too um, bad. Um, I believe that uh, we've not lost all hopes. There's a possibility that we'll get those girls back mm. because the military are not sleeping on that, and I'm sure they will do that. Um, Mr. Um, great that you've brought in the perspective of the new service chiefs. Um, it is uh, maybe expected that there would be new strategies, there would be new vigor, there would be, you know, maybe a different level of support for these new service chiefs. Um, what would your expectations be? And, you know, do you think that, you know, there, there is a likelihood that we might see a totally different energy, a totally different force um, with our security setup um, that might, um, you know, result in the release of these girls? Absolutely. I have, I have, I have um, you know, confidence that this new set of services they brought, they've just appointed, will do uh, 
something good that we will appreciate. Don't forget that these are guys who have already who have the experience that tested and trusted they've, they've served in that particular uh, you know uh, uh, location as uh, theater commanders both of them have served in that capacity meaning that they have they know the terrain to understand the, the dynamics to understand the issues at stake they they have the enthusiasm they have the support of nigerians um you see when we have situations like this the best approach to it to see is is to 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 live in with a cautious optimism yes we don't have to lose hope uh but i believe that the success or otherwise of these new service chiefs uh, are contingent on two factors one is the support from government then the support by citizens when i say support by the government i mean the fact that the government should be able to give them what they to, to do the job. In other words, they, they have to have uh, the, the proper equipment they need. They have to have a number of boots on the ground, meaning that there have to be more uh, recruitment of, of uh, soldiers. There have to be more platforms to be purchased. There have to be uh, uh, you know, deliberate synergy between the air and land forces. Then on the part of the citizens, there has to be support. There has to be collaboration. There has to be you know, uh, support in, in terms of giving intelligence uh, or rather information, because from information, you're not processing to, 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 to be an intelligence. So Nigerians living out there where we have those issues should be able to support the, the military by way of, you know, we have said it before here, saying something when they say something, and of course, being friendly to the troops, making sure that the troops are working in a very good atmosphere to be able to give out the best they can. So I believe that this new, service, uh, new set of service chiefs will ultimately, you know, and this insurgency, I have that optimism that this thing will end soon. Because, oh, of course, we want to the fact I'm that right, yeah. the, the immediate past leadership of the military actually did their best also, you know, in, in other circumstances. Oh, Even right. the fact that not we were, they are not only just faced with Northeast, they have the Northwest to contend with in terms of the bandits, they have the kidnapping and headsmen clashes in North Central, they have the ESN now propping up in the Southeast, they have a lot of well, issues, uh, multiplicity of operations across the country. So this is an easy. So we have to uh, understand this fact, and of course we have. To, and there are one issue, one conversation we need to talk, we need to go engage in, and that is the issue of what we call security architecture of the country. It has to be rejected. Well, when we say that, we mean we mean that in internal uh, security operation, that ordinarily it should be that the police ought to be the lead agency. But what you see now is that the military are called. Uh, every situation, even when they're supposed to be the last line of defense, but right. now so every major. thing you call the military. What that translates is that they are almost overwhelmed. So we have to give, we have to understand all these things to know that um, it's not just the military. What all about right. the police? What we're, about the intelligence we're, community? We're what about the NSS office? What about, there are so many levels of support that we need to ensure that we get the result we need. We're so out of time, just, and you know, uh, we'll have to, have to we'll have to wrap it up here. In this um, we'll would have to wrap it up here, uh, Chidio Major. Um, I wish there's a lot of questions that I want to ask, but we're <laughs> maybe we'll talk on the phone after this. But thank you very much for speaking with us and for spending your morning with us thank uh, today. You. Thank you, thank you, friends. I appreciate appreciate Absolutely. the opportunity. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, I personally, you know, I think he he quickly he mentioned the ESN as one of the you know security threats that we currently have, and I I, don't, I, I personally don't agree with that. I don't think they are a security threat to Nigeria. Um, yes, maybe they need to be understood better, but um, you can't call them in the same you know in the same breath as Boko Haram and bandits and kidnappers. Yeah. You know, you can't just throw ESN in there somewhere. Um, and also, yes, um, it's not because we are not giving kudos or we don't give credit to the Nigerian security forces and um, um, agencies. But I think it's okay for a Nigerian to be bewildered generally that 100 plus Nigerian girls have been missing for six years and we have not seen a government. Yes, they, they are doing what they can. I'll give them that. But it still would be shocking in any way and in any you know, manner that for six years we have been missing a hundred plus Nigerian girls and there is no word about where they would be or where they could be found or how they would come back. And it makes, to me, makes no sense it that doesn't. we do not have this on the lips of the presidency every other week. It doesn't. I cannot imagine a hundred Americans kidnapped for six years and it is not, I mean, it, 
I can't, I just and, cannot. And th that's, the, that's the illustration I was trying to make, bringing in that issue with, uh, you know, Philip Walton and the U.S. Because I don't, I don't imagine any other, you know, first world country that this would happen for the past six years, about a hundred of its citizens kidnapped or missing, vanished into thin air, and the government isn't saying anything about this. Maybe the president would have been forced to resign if he were somewhere else other than Africa, but it is what it is here. And it's just shocking how the, the presidency and security, you know, agencies or go ahead and tell you that Samisa Forest has been cleared out. There is no terrorist there. So then where are the girls, really? The, I, I, once again, um, I'll cut them some slack and give them mm. kudos for you know what they've done. It probably would have been a lot worse if they haven't done things that they've done so far. But still, it is expected that Nigerians would worry and would put the government under pressure because if 100 Nigerians are missing, it should be top of the, the discussions yes. every single week until they are found and or, since or this, until they are rescued. Indeed. And since this, uh, this fake news is coming out, you know, just on the back of the appointment of these new service chiefs, I think they have a lot to do. They have yes, to they find those girls somehow. Anyway, anyway, we have a discussion on entertainment with uh, Ifeo Shunkeye. We're talking about Copy. Copy goes to court and he's suing the media aide or social media manager of Zlatan Ibile. If you love music, you definitely know Zlatan and all his hype on the music. But it's not all fun and games here. They're talking serious business and some people just might be paying uh, lots of money in damages. And that will be after this break. <laughs> 